Bravo, really very exciting and, and brilliant and amazing that you can play all that without a page turner even. That was just <laughs> an astonishing skill there, really breathtaking. Fantastic. Okay. Um, so I was saying before about, you know, first impressions and trying to get some things. I'm going to, you know, get down to work now. Take the jacket off. Definitely very warm in here, and it's very warm <laughs> for you <laughs> especially. Um, okay, so what I want to, my first feelings, of course, you're playing the, the last movement, you know. We haven't had all the build up to this moment, and probably you've got too much energy because you haven't used it up, you know, the first, the Haydn trio you started with and the Schubert, and now you're finishing with Mendelssohn, and this is the last movement. By this time, you should be exhausted, you know. It, it, so my, my feeling is almost sometimes that, you know, when you play a single movement, it's the hardest thing to do because you haven't found your way through the organic structures and all everything else of every other movement. But, you know, you're experienced, so we're starting with a situation where you can launch into it. But my, my first feeling was, they have just got so much energy, which is very exciting, but it's leading me to feel a little bit that what you're not immediately doing is responding to the situation that is right now. This situation, the acoustic now, the way the sound is, the way, you know, everything changes all the time. So the humidity level in here right now in this wonderful pouring wet lake <laughs> weather is very, very high. So it's kind of, when you're playing instruments, it feels like mushy, you know, because there's so much wetness in the hair, in the bow, and everything is kind of spongy in that way. And we kind of compensate for that sometimes when we play. And the acoustic is quite resonant in here. So what happens is that when we, as experienced artists, what we do is we accommodate the moment we play the first note. The first note you play tells you, ah, the sound is going to be like this in the hall. When I rehearsed in here, it was very different, and now it's very different. So basic things have to change. First of all, how much sound you make, and what are your potential for sound, is something you discover almost immediately. You know, obviously you're starting really, really soft, di pianissimo, and so you feel, is it, when, is it pianissimo in here, like this level, or do I, have to, do I have to come down to that level for it to be really quiet? So in here, I think it's very live. So the first challenge I would say in here is try to get your dynamic level so that you have something really, really, really quiet because the loud stuff's just gonna bang around. And now you've got, I would say, you know, five million notes per, in the piano, per, per 30 seconds. I mean, really a million. That's just Mendelssohn. I mean, he just loves flying around. But in this acoustic, what happens is that we don't hear how brilliant you are. We hear... But, but you know, what makes it sound brilliant is hearing every note, because there are so many notes that hearing, and that's why he wrote them, because he wants living articulation between every note so that we feel something is happening, that you are really running. As soon as it starts to blur, we stop noticing and then it becomes less exciting. And then you probably have to play even faster, which just exacerbates the situation. So what we need to do in this acoustic is to find immediately a tempo that allows you to play soft enough and also for us to hear everything. So that was a very long way of saying, I, thought, I think it was too fast. And it's not because I want it to sound slower. I don't. I actually want it to sound faster. But it sounds faster when you hear everything. The rules of music making are you can only go as far as you can hear everything. It's speed. If you're going faster than that, you don't hear anything, then we're ignoring a lot of what is written in the music. And the other point is, do you have time to be expressive? Because there's no point in being up here and not being expressive. Nobody wants to hear you give a really boring speech. They want it to be expressive. They want to feel that, it's, you, they, that what you're saying is worthwhile listening to and that they will take it away with them. And here you have that chance to explain something to the audience, everything that's beautiful about this music. That's our job.
Our job is to say, look, Mendelssohn would like you to hear all of these things. Now, what I noticed was that when you got to the middle section with this gorgeous theme, then, of course, you took more time, you found, you know, a more relaxed, beautiful, tranquilo feeling. You were very expressive in your solo. They had the chance, he had the chance to be something. And the tempo kind of calmed down. But then when you went back to, you know, yeah, all of that, you picked up the tempo. And I think then you got past the point where we really could hear everything. And also past the point where you can ex be expressive. So I want to, I want to, do an experiment, so to speak. I want you to play much, much slower, just so that we can find out what were you actually saying. It's a bit like, in acoustic like this, I would never speak really, really quickly, because if, you could, if I speak really quickly, you're not going to understand what I've been saying. <laughs> so I know that people at the back, I have to speak in a more articulated way. I have to speak slower, so that you can hear while the sound's banging around. Otherwise, it all ends up jumbled. And that is what we have to do. If it was a really dead acoustic, it might be a different story how you handled it. But it's not. And who knows where you're going to play. So we have to be incredibly flexible. But I want, to do, I want you to slow down just in order for us to explore a little bit how you can feel really more uh, expressive in your way of turning the phrase, the way of using the legatos and the staccatos you know, no, all of these very small details. Da da ba 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 ba, be da ba 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 ba. He's he's explaining that as a line and short notes. And if it's really fast and if it's not really clear, we don't catch why he wrote it that way. So I'd like you to start just to experiment. Really, we just see what happens. Can you choose a like half tempo just to work in the first section to see what you can find that's really really expressive. This is a kind of process that we need to go through when we're exploring the music and we're trying to understand everything that Mendelssohn asks us to play. So can you, can you do that? And what I want you to do is to use everything you can to make every note absolutely sparkling, absolutely beautiful, really articulated, the quality of the sound. You must be thinking how it sounds over there all of the time not how it sounds here, because nobody ever hears you here. We get this a lot with string players, that people get really worried about things, the noises that are being made by the cello. And I said, nobody ever comes and listens to you like this. The first time they hear you is, you know, at least three or four meters away, by which time the sound you make has already covered any noises. We like, for instance, I always feel that we ought to hear you breathing. You ought to you should all feel you breathing here. By then, probably it's not going to be heard over there, but even if it is, that's really good because we need, all need to breathe. And that's another thing I wanted to talk about in terms of the speed and where you are with the music because it's flying, but there's no real chance to breathe. And breathing is the most natural thing that we can do. It's actually you know, what keeps us alive. So we need, the music needs to have that and to be energetic, you need to breathe. Your muscles need oxygen, your brain needs oxygen. All of these things have to happen. So if you play, which you can do without stopping, you're going against nature if you don't find places to breathe and against the music. So can we, let's just go slowly just for a moment. Can you start from the beginning one more time? Okay, sorry to interrupt, and this is what's going to happen now, I'm afraid I'm <laughs> going to interrupt a lot. What is really, to you, what is really beautiful about that passage? Where, where is it going? Where is it coming from? What are you saying first? How does it develop? Because all of those things are innate in understanding music. Where do you start? What kind of energy is it? What kind of character is it? Because we don't know what you're going to do. So when you play your, just play the first note for me, the first chord. Okay. That could be Beethoven, couldn't it? It could be something really, really serious. It's not a nice open major chord. It's something dark, isn't it? Mysterious, that chord. Play once more. Yeah. 
Now he writes pianissimo. So how can you make that pianissimo for those people there? Yeah. Keep searching, yeah. And of course the balance of the chord, which parts are more interesting and we're doing is find what you're doing is finding the colors finding the sound so that you can express how beautifully Mendelssohn wrote that one chord okay now move from that chord to the next chord for me okay if this was an opera that would already be the most tragic thing wouldn't it and the suspense in that is going Is that a relief? It's a slow movement, isn't it? It's a slow movement. Play me dee da da dee da da. Okay. So, okay, he asks you to play a bit faster. Not, he doesn't ask you to play vivace, he doesn't ask you to play really fast, because then he wouldn't have a chance to be expressive. So play once more and continue a little bit further in the same way. Okay, one more time, explore a bit more carefully because my <clears throat> I have what I call a book of golden rules. In my book of golden rules, there are millions of golden rules. They're all incredibly important. And one of them is the golden rule about the fact that music must go somewhere or come from somewhere all of the time. If it's just there, music, then that's what I call minimalist music. It's what a very specific type of music which doesn't have a sense of going anywhere or coming from anywhere. It's just there. And if you know Morton Feldman or things like that, John Cage, sometimes you just have music just exists. But this is not minimalist music. This is music which must go somewhere it must travel somewhere or must have a sense where it's come from so when you play this first phrase you have to show us where are you going where are you going you okay fine now the thing is the great thing about music is that you can make a decision based on your instinct about the music now, and then you can change your mind because Mendelssohn doesn't give you so many details. He just gives you the harmony, the rhythms and everything and says, this is how I feel it. But then of course, we respond in our own way. We try to think that we're learning what Mendelssohn would like to say because his language is in those notes. So, but you've surmised that that's where you're going, right? Also, what I gather is that you want, then want to breathe before you play the next phrase. Yeah? Okay. So, what we, we learn by exaggeration. Simple as that. The fastest method of learning is by exaggeration. If you always walk like this, and somebody says, you know, it's really bad for your back and your head, you know, you have to stand up when you walk. So you think, oh yeah, I'll walk like that. And you think, yeah, this is much better, yeah. And unless you sort of think of something really like, I have to look like this person I know who looks amazing when they walk down the street, and they look like they're floating, and I, I can just imagine myself like that, and you exaggerate it in your head and in your body and the way you breathe, then maybe five minutes later you will still walk like that. We're doing that all the time. So I want you to exaggerate the feelings and what you're thinking, because those are two golden rules about how you work, what you feel and what you think. Without thinking, you're lost. Without feeling, there's no purpose. So if you've found that feeling in that first phrase, that has to be exaggerated. And what you're thinking is where you're going. So that has to be exaggerated. 
And when that's really powerful, then you will play wonderfully. End of story. <laughs> but take your time to do it. So play a little bit slower so you really have time to exaggerate it. I see I think that's really really gorgeous so if you can get that message across and you're playing ten times faster fantastic but you have to find the limits don't you but if you're just playing da 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 then of course it doesn't you've missed all the music all right now the great thing about chamber music and collaboration is that if he plays that beautifully then when you come and you're going to think, I'm really going to have to play beautifully now because <laughs> I'm going to sound terrible after that. So there's a challenge that's set up. That's one of the fabulous things about chamber music. If somebody plays something beautifully, you, are, you have to rise to that challenge. And you're putting it down now. You're putting the gauntlet down. You too, you're going to have to play so beautifully when I play like that. Okay? Can you carry on? That tempo, carry on and let them come to their point. But... All of these things are great, what you've just done. Breathing, shaping. Okay, good. Right, so what I'm going to say is you have to be much more beautiful on that. The kind of sound you make. You know, playing the instrument is like talking. That's really what it is. You're speaking with your instruments. So if I speak to the audience like this, after a minute or so, they're going to say, what a strange person he is. <laughs> but if I, if I speak like this, I'm so interested to tell you about this now, they're going to think something else. If I say, oh, you have to listen to me now. <laughs> okay? It's all the same, and it doesn't really matter which words I use. It's about how I express it, what colour, what kind of character I'm going to use. So play me your first notes again and choose a seductively beautiful sound. How are you going to do that? You know, you have the technique for that. Something that is so beautiful, it's like the first note he played. Can you just strings, can you just play me that first chord? Okay, it's slower and just hold the note so you find it. So, my, my impression is right now is it's Ah, but I don't hear the beauty that he had in his first chord. Do you just, I, I need to know, perhaps you don't want it to be beautiful, perhaps you want me to feel, ah. tell me, what do you think? I know it should be beautiful, yeah. Okay, try to convince me. Just play that note once more time. Okay, what are the things that make a sound beautiful? I think it is fast. Okay, that's one thing, yeah. That's the beginning spark too, isn't it? Powerful moment. What else do you think brings beauty? What else, where do you think the beauty comes from? Inside yourself. Do you think about the harmony you're playing? I mean, this is really where you're playing your... It's really dark note, isn't it? And she's quite a lot higher than you, so there's a kind of stretch between you. And usually the bass has to be stronger than the treble because it holds the treble. You have to support her. But also, vibrant, something that's beautiful, has life in it. If there's no life in it, it's over. So how are we going to get some life into the sound? Something to make it really espressivo. If it said espressivo, what would you do? Show me. Mm. 
Okay, you need to tr you need to try much harder than that. <laughs> Give me something much more than that, yeah? Okay, that's exaggerating a little bit. Can you exaggerate more? Do more of that, yeah? Okay, so I think a little bit more heart is the beautiful side of things. We, it's about passion, isn't it? It's about something that's coming from with, inside you. Nobody wants to know about your instruments or whether you're playing on pirastro strings or yaga strings. They just want to feel something out here. They want to say that you're going to say, listen to me. So listen to me, which means vibrato. It means life that's going on. Yes. And it means a beginning, like you said, something with a spark, something beginning and moving on. It's not static. Even though I've asked you to play a single note, it's not static. It has to live. Can you try again, please? Okay. Now, be very careful with your very dark sound here that you're not... Because at the moment, because it's, a, it's C sharp that has this kind of edge on it, yeah? Which I think you want something like that, yeah? But be careful the edge is not something that is like, uh, excuse me. I don't think you want to say, excuse me, to the audience. You want to say, something like that, yeah? Serious. So that needs more content. It needs more warmth. It needs more vibrancy from it, not too much just edge on it. Try one more time. Okay, so it's getting a bit more mysterious and they're getting a bit more life in it. Can you go on, play D, bum, bum, D. Okay. So what I need also from you now is that you don't stop vibrating. Because we have tee da 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 tee da 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 It becomes like a rhythm, but it's, it's a melody, isn't it? All of it's a melody, which means you have to live both hands all of the time through your melody. Can you start one more time? That's better, but every note, dum bum bee, bum bum bee. As soon as it's without vibrato, it's ba ba bee. Tee dum bum 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 bum. Sometimes you have repeated notes, don't you? So the repeated notes are another of my golden rules. Why would he repeat something? Why do you ever repeat something? Because you want to. You want to confirm something. If I say, yes, 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 that's repetition, isn't it? Or no, no, no. But you wouldn't say, yes, 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 because it's just there's something wrong with my brain now that I have to repeat myself. He's not repeating notes. He's taking a line of confirmation or a development or retraction or something. So if you play your repeated notes... They're still going somewhere. They're still coming from somewhere. He doesn't have to say diminuendo or crescendo because he's written a repeated note. That explains everything. Otherwise, you're just a robot playing the same thing again and again. Can you play once more time, thinking about the melodic line, about any repetitions, about how you're going to flow through the melody? Okay, that's better. Still, there are some things where you need to do more and be careful. I think, do it, can we come from just before that with the piano now? I want you to respond to him. Everything, your part is written piano. His was pianissimo. So that's already some development in the music, isn't it? Can you start once more from the beginning? Still on the slow side, yeah?
Okay, good, good. So now when we change the character here, which you did very nicely, can you exaggerate that more as well? Because it's a surprise. After the sforzando, but still now he's still repeating notes. He's still using the same kind of structure, but he's asking you to change the mood, which means the color of your voice. Can we go from where you start once more, where the, the strings come in? Oh, sorry to interrupt once more. You know, I'm, I don't feel that you are really together. D young bumpy. It's coming D, but the second note comes anywhere, but not as though, hey, listen, we have to do this together. We have to feel, we have to breathe, we have to move. D bumpy because we're going forwards. It's not just happening. Nothing just happens on the platform. Brain has to work. Heart has to work. Everything has to go. We have to understand we're moving together. Otherwise, there's no point in being a team here. Feel it together. Help each other to the next note. It's much more interesting. It's much more stimulating to be working together. It's like conducting each other in that way. Let's do it together now. Can you go from there? Yeah, sorry. So do you notice how she has Of course you notice that. But in the meantime, you have bum 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 bum. You don't have tiram. Let her be expressive in that moment. Let her tiram bum bum. Bar. Let her take any expressive time she needs. Don't just be underneath her, yeah, like that. Go with her because she has that one beautiful extra thing there. One more time. Good, okay, that was much better. I don't know if you feel now they're a little bit more integrated. Yes, I see nods. You know, it's so important for us to feel that you're unified in that way. The energy between you is three times greater. Communicate, look at each other if you need to, or listen anyway, much more carefully. You know, the, uh, the art of chamber music playing is to listen to yourself less than you listen to the other people. Listen to each other more than yourself. But make sure what you're doing is incredibly beautiful. Same place, please. Okay, good. Are you breathing together? I don't feel, I don't hear, I want to hear. I want you to feel that you're breathing together. You know, when you're playing your bass notes, what's he doing? He's playing bass notes. Do you feel connected to his bass notes? He's playing this way, yum bum ba, this way. So whatever you do has to go almost pianistically in his direction. He can't play like a string player, but you can play more like a pianist. But you be listening much more to his bass line to go with it, but also listening to her line because she has to be expressive. There's a lot to do. Last time and carry on. One more, sorry. I, when I say last time, I never mean last time. <laughs> Again, but remember where you're going, the second note has to be together. Okay. All right. The, the danger of saying it has to be together is it sounds like a calculation. Music is not a calculation. It's not mathematics. It's not microsecond timing. It's a force beyond what we can believe, what we can understand, I should say. Use the force to go together. It's musical energy. Take it and go with it. Yeah. Don't think. Uh, there has to be there. Go together, feel the music.
Yeah, okay, here's a, here's, but you know, don't you think? Like this is a little bit, it's a bit plain in a way, but it could be incredibly atmospheric. Yum, ba, 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 be, ba, be, ba. Yeah, ba, 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 be. You know, it's a phrase. It's still a phrase. Once you set the atmosphere, be careful that it's still moving. Music must always move. We are working with sound waves. You produce, a, you move the string with a, with a hammer on the piano or with the bow. The string resonates, the string moves the air, and the air moves and it arrives as an air wave to the audience. And for some extraordinary, unbelievable reason, we are emotionally completely transfixed by it. We can either feel <gasps> like this, or we can think, oh my goodness, this is so gorgeous. And what is it that's doing that? The air moving. That's all. There is no other reason. You are literally moving the air. But if the air just goes like this, then we are not moved. Maybe it's because the air waves are moving and they're making our bodies resonate. And if we're resonating, we're maybe part of the music. But if there's no resonance, we're not connected to it. So the resonance, once you set it up, it still has to be continued like this. It still has to be an air wave, a, a, a wave, exactly. But if you go, ah, it's no longer a wave, and I'm losing you. Do you know what I'm talking about? So exaggerate. It doesn't matter if, it doesn't, if it's wrong. It really doesn't matter if it doesn't work, because that's how you find out what works and doesn't work. It's better and quicker to find out what doesn't work than sometimes it is to find out what does work. So at least eliminate what doesn't work quickly. Try something, yeah? Try anything you like to try to make the movie, move, music move and shape and continue. Yeah? Lead, somebody help lead the phrase in a way. Let you respond to that. <laughs> Okay, good. This is where the arguments should start in the group. This is like, well, I tried this and you didn't do that with me. And you said, well, I like this. Okay, now we have to have a really good discussion about what works and what doesn't work. And this is how we find out until somebody says, okay, your idea was better than mine. Or I concede, I don't like it, but I'll do it anyway. I mean, there's all sorts of things that go on in chamber groups and that's part of it. You did a fantastic diminuendo, you did a beautiful crescendo. They happened at the same time. You didn't really respond to each other. But it was only the first time. I said, try it. Can you do it once more and really listen out? Who, because sometimes it's about down to such a tiny moment. Somebody goes down. You say, yes, I'll go down with them. Or up. Somebody else says, oh, yeah, I'll go with you. Listen to each other that carefully. Can you start from this, this, this exactly this phrase? The surprise phrase? I said this is a workshop, and I, I meant it. You know, this is what you discover how you work with a movement you might find in the first bar. Because he's giving, he's making a statement about what this music is about. And of course, it develops from there. It's the seed that the rest of the music grows from. And sometimes, of course, that seed has 
blossomed into something fantastic, and then we need something to follow that. And we do have that middle gorgeous music session, middle section. But now we have, can I just quickly, because we're running out of time, talk about this fast section now. What I th recommend is, again, try to be as clear as possible, because now you've got an, a, an echoey acoustic. Try to keep the pedal to an absolute minimum so that, we, so that it's really sparkling like that and not jumbled. Can you just try it from there? Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, just. Great, great. You see, already, I, you know, it's, it's much slower than it was first, but there's a brilliance about it. We hear, and we hear your bass line, which he's going to cover and so on. We can hear into the music. As soon as it's, we don't really get the messages nearly so clearly. Can you all start from that place? Do you know where that is? Yeah. Hang on, sorry. You know, whatever you're doing, you have to listen much more. Because he's really good. He can't adapt around you at this point. He's got... He can't say... He can't do that. And you're just playing. Of course it's a melody, but you've got to be listening to him much, much more, but also playing incredibly beautifully. Same place? So finally, we say yum, palm. That's everybody. It's finished for the moment. So, what was that whole purpose of that? Now, let's look back because we have to do this a lot when we work on music. We get so far and we have to say, hang on a minute, where did we come from and how did we get here? That's our job. How did you get to this point? Yum, palm. Can you look back and see how the wave worked? Where were the important places? Where were the stresses? Where were the relaxation? Who was playing what? What was most important? What we have is a score which describes very, very clearly. And our job is not to look at our own parts. Our job is to look at the score, which is a map of who is playing what, when, and who's got the important line, and how we can support it, sometimes how we can jump into it, so there's a point in the middle of that where the violin's playing, and suddenly you have something where you have to say, no, it's me now. And chamber music is very much like that. We, it's a soap opera. You know, we come to watch the soap opera. We sometimes like it when you argue. Sometimes we like it when you cry. We, we certainly like it when you're all together and happy. But the music is designed in such a way that you're in you're against each other, and then finally you are together, and it's so, so beautiful. But now you have to keep saying, no, wait a minute, it's me now. No, it's me, now it's me. And this kind of thing, a conversation, an argument that's going on, is there in the music all the time. Can you go from the same place and listen out for that? Where are you more important? Where is your line underneath somebody else's? <laughs> This da 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 da. You're together, aren't you? So what do we do? We enjoy being together, don't we? That's the whole purpose of thing of life. We enjoy being together, and we also enjoy being on our own. But here's a moment where he writes that you should be together. So it's not just you playing a line and he play, and he plays a line and it happens to be the same. You're saying, hey, listen, everybody, we're together on this. Be connected in that way completely because it's enjoyment of the music is express, expressing the unity inside the music. Last time. Okay, good. 
good. So, you had the two lines together. Then did you notice she joined them for a little bit? Then you're all together. And then finally, yum, bam, all together. The energy, of course, is much greater when you're all together. Okay, unfortunately, we've run out of time, but I just want you to kind of, let's recap very, very quickly. What are the most important things? What you learn from your experience today, you can go and write notes and saying afterwards, I learned this, this was a good thing, I'm not sure about that. Just make some general points about what's happened, what you've experienced, good and bad, it's all fine, it's all learning. But what I want to say is, look, be very careful with the music. You know, it it's a, it's a work of a genius. You have to handle the work of a genius with such care. Every note, because you're all musical, you can all play, but that's not the point. The point is how we handle Mendelssohn so that we say, Mendelssohn, you are a genius. Every note you do is absolutely incredible. How am I going to be that expressive? How can I pay homage to every note that you have written in such a way, I need time to be expressive. I need to find the way the music flows. And in chamber music, I need to find out what's going on between us all the time. Who's joining which line? How can I support somebody else? When it's three of us, when it's two of us, when we're pushing somebody else. The conversation that's going on between you. And on top of that, with that, is also always the voice which you speak with. The voice, the sound that you create in the hall, not in your room, not in your practice room, but how it's going to be in the hall and in here right now, how you're going to deal with that. So the most important thing is that you take, you know, we're so lucky that we can work with the great masters of history. We are so privileged that it's a question of making sure that we use every moment of that. Every sound you make, every connection from one note to the next is a way of expressing Mendelssohn. So make sure you're not thinking about yourself. Make sure you're thinking about the sound you produce and how it works with everybody else. I think I've said enough. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Take a bow. Take a bow.